Hey guys! Today I'm going to be doing the Greek Gods of Olympus tag. This tag's been out for a couple years now, but the Bernie Maze is coming out on May 1st, so I wanted to do a Greek related themed book tag. Before I begin, I am super sorry about the crap lighting. The reflection you see in my glasses is the computer because that's where I have the questions pulled up at the moment. And as for the actual lighting situation, it's currently 9.30 at night because I take care of my handicapped aunt from like 10.30 at night to like sometimes 8 o'clock in the morning. And that means I sleep basically the entire day. And when I wake up, sometimes she's just too rowdy for me to film. So that's why I'm going to be bulk recording a few videos tonight. That way, hopefully, I will have some content to upload because it's seriously been driving me crazy. So the next few videos are going to have crap lighting. There's really nothing I can do about that. But enough of the excuses, let's get started with this tag. First up is Zeus. Name your favorite fictional leader. For this one, I had to go with Julian Blackthorne from The Dark Artifices. Mainly because he's kind of both good and evil. I mean, he does everything for his family. So if you're a part of his family or a person that he or his family cares about, he's very helpful to you but if you're against him in like the littlest way or if you hurt his family he can be very manipulative deceiving and downright cutthroat which in a way are all good qualities for a leader next up is Hera who are your favorite fictional parents and this was very 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 difficult because I wanted to get a book series that specifically had two parents because otherwise I would have just went with Sally Jackson from the Percy Jackson series but I'm going to be going with Wendy and Loki from the Trill trilogy and technically they're not parents yet but they are going to be parents and I love both characters so much especially Loki even though Wendy did annoy me at times. And I think they're going to be very, very good parents. And I also think this is the only instance where they're actually two parents in the series. They're not, one of them isn't dead or both of them isn't dead. Next up is Demeter. What fictional food would you love to try? Now the only fictional food I could actually think of off the top of my head from books I've read is from the Harry Potter series and the Percy Jackson series. And I have the Harry Potter cookbook so I can make the majority of the food that's in those books. So I guess going between the Harry Potter food that I can actually make since I have the cookbook and Ambrosia from the Percy Jackson series, which I think is the actually only fictional food that's mentioned a lot in that series, I'm gonna go with Ambrosia. And I'll just hope and pray that I don't burn up. Next up is Poseidon. Name a book where water is central, either in the setting or the plot. And I went with both. With the Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan. Absolutely loved this book. And the entire book is centered around the Sea of Monsters or the Bermuda Triangle, whichever you want to call it. So it's a key point in the setting and in the plot because you're having to battle a bunch of sea monsters and you get stranded on islands that are surrounded by the sea and need I really say more. Next up is Dionysus. Which character would you most like to have a party with? And I'm gonna have to go with Katie from the Lux series. My second choice if Katie isn't available is Kath from Fangirl because I feel like both of those girls would be up for my kind of party which is basically sitting around with a bunch of snack foods and drinks and just reading together because who doesn't love a reading party? The next is Apollo. Either name a great debut book or name the first book in a series that you really enjoyed. For this, I just decided to go with the first book of a series that I really enjoyed. And this first book to the series, I absolutely fell in love with. And that is 
Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I listened to this book on the audiobook while I followed along during, I think it was the last book to thon and I absolutely fell in love with this story in ways that I never would have guessed. It is just so good. The plot is so immersive and I, I didn't think it would be that way considering the way it's told in like messages and video feeds and stuff like that. But these two authors did an incredible job with this series. I'm currently waiting for my library to get the audiobook for Obsidio because it's really expensive and I don't have that kind of money. So I can't read the final book to the series yet because I what I read the first two through the audiobooks and I am not going to read the third book without it. I want that audiobook so bad. Next up is Artemis, who is your favorite female heroine? For this, I'm gonna go with a heroine from a manga series. That is Sakura from Card Captor Sakura. This is a fantastic series. I watched the entire anime and I absolutely love it. If you haven't seen the anime, I highly recommend it, but I also recommend that you watch it with, in Japanese with English subtitles or whatever language you speak subtitles because the voices of the anime dub is just no. I, I couldn't get into it. it. It literally turned me off the anime the first time I tried to watch it before I knew the glory of Japanese subs. I barely watch any animes now in English and this is one that I will absolutely never try to watch in English again. So highly recommend the series. It's great. The main heroine of this story goes around with a magic wand trying to subdue these creatures that live in cards. That's the best way I can describe it. I also love how Sakura is a bit of a scaredy cat, which is something you would expect from a fourth grader. But I just love how, regardless of how scared she is, she pushes herself and does what is necessary. Next up, Athena. Name a character who is wise. That's very simple. Hermione Granger. She is the wisest character I can think of. Next, Hermes. If you could travel to any fictional setting in the real world or fantasy, where would you go? I would either go to Hogwarts or Camp Half-Blood because those are my two favorite fictional settings. Next up, Hephaestus. And I hope I'm saying his name right. I'm not 100% sure. But if you could have any fictional tool made, either a weapon or a gadget, what would you want? Now, since it's actually being made and wands are made, could go with a magic wand for this one. Mainly because with a magic wand, you could do anything. But if I wasn't a witch, it wouldn't work regardless. I mean, I guess if he can make it work regardless whether I have magic, you know, I would want a wand. But I guess it doesn't, ne it doesn't have to be a weapon. So what's something I would absolutely love? Oh, I know exactly what I'd want him to make. I'd want him to make like this, you know those little devices where it sends like um, sound waves out that's supposed to drive away bugs and mice and it doesn't really work no matter how much you want it to work. I want him to make me one of those that would like cover the entire house. That's all I want, something like that because I've had to deal with so many spiders and I just actually got rid of a mouse and I just, I, I don't want to have anything to do with that. So make me a device that gets rid of all of the nasty bugs and critters. I don't want them. I mean, I, I live in the middle of the woods, so I'd have to deal with them outside, but I shouldn't have to deal with them in the house. Okay, moving on from that ugh topic, we have Ares and it's what is your favorite fictional battle? Now, I could have gone with the Battle of Hogwarts, but even though the battle really sticks in my mind, I wouldn't really call it my favorite battle. But I really like the way the battle in the City of Glass was written, and I also like the fact that we had like little humorous moments in between all of the fights and battles 
which, I mean, it was a really engaging fight to begin with, but it's like those just little humorous moments kept me wanting to read more and more and more no matter what was happening to all my favorite characters. Next we have Aphrodite. What is your ultimate ship? I have so many. I've actually made two videos on this so far and I could go with Malak because if those two ever break up my heart will shatter into a million pieces but there's also Kit and Ty from the Dark Artifice series that I absolutely love them together so, so much. I mean, well, they're not together, but I want them together. I really don't know. I have too many OTPs to really keep up with. The next is Hades. If you could petition Hades to bring any fictional character back to life, who would it be? And I'm not going to say who the character is. I'm just going to hold up this book and those of you who have read it will know exactly who I'm talking about. And I'm pretty sure all of us were immensely heartbroken. And as soon as we finished the book, we actually got a book hangover from it. I know a lot of people actually had like a massive book hangover or they went into a reading slump after this, the ending of this book. And I'm one of those that was like in a massive book hangover. I almost adamantly refused to pick up another book after I finished this and it was all because of that character to death. Bring this character back please and stop breaking my heart Cassandra please. I don't look for that to stop happening anytime soon. Then we have the final question. If you could be a god or goddess of anything what would it be? I would be the goddess of books and anime and animals. I'm not going to tag anybody because this is kind of a fairly old tag and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already done it. If you haven't done it, feel free to do it. You're tagged. But for now, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!